for combat. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Heroes of the Storm, just like the thumbnail and the title says, I'm going to show you how to carry a game with Thrall. Thrall is super easy to play and has a lot of impact on top of all that. But this is a YouTube video, so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll kick this week off right. So, the team comps today are going to be Thrall, Kel'Thuzad, Junkrat, Li Ming, and Imperius versus Asmodan, Diva, Greymane, Falstad, and Artanis. So, our team actually kind of has a tank. Uh, their team does not. Now, it's going to be up to the players of those characters if they are going to play them in the roles that need to be played, but, you know, that remains to be seen. So if you're not familiar with Thrall, he does have some pretty rounded abilities in his kit, but our uh, Q ability is called Chain Lightning. It is just a point and click ability that we are going to cast. It is going to bounce to a couple targets, and now Artanis has been swapped into our team. Uh, he swapped himself, I should say, into our team. Way to go, buddy. Thanks for giving us the first kill. So, um, Chain Lightning, though, it's going to bounce all over the place. It's going to do a little bit of damage in his point and click. And this does line up very well with our trait. So, uh, as the, the game progresses, this is actually going to become a better portion of our wave clear. Uh, even though that's pretty poor for Thrall, it is still something that's going to happen. Falstad not understanding how much damage that we can do to him directly in his face and then trade literally everything out. Our W is called the Feral Spirit, and it's a wolf. We actually shoot out a wolf missile that runs in a straight line and is going to do damage and root a person once it connects with a hero. So if it hits uh, minions, it's just going to dash right through them. If it hits heroes, it's going to stop and root them. didn't used to be that way. It used to be if you hit a... Uh, a minion it would stop and that is really really just it was not good it was not good uh, but the other cool thing about the ability is that it is going to increase the distance per hero hit so the initial line isn't very big but if you have a whole bunch of people grouped up your wolf is going to run pretty far and it can potentially hit some people pretty you know, pretty uh, decently camped out in the back line. It's really good for holding it down, running through the tanks, and just slapping little dudes in the back. Like this Falstead, for some reason, who just dashed forward. Now we're just going to walk him to death, give him a little spray, and then be on with our day. Now our E is called uh, Wind Fury, and it is the probably the easiest burst damage that Thrall has in his kit. Uh, it's all tied to his auto attack and it's going to increase our auto attack speed for... what is that? So he's going to give us movement speed 30% for 4 seconds and his next 3 basic attacks are going to happen 100% faster. So, uh, it is a very short window of attack speed and it is a... <laughs> no, no you can't just fly back here and get a kill. Um, Right, but the, the movement speed's pretty short window, uh, and the attack speed is only for three auto attacks. So we're going to hit really quick when we activate Wind Fury, and we're going to move really fast as well. But you got to know what you're clicking on, and you have to make sure that you're still stutter stepping with it so you can land all three of the attacks. Because if people start moving, then it's probably not going to happen. Just need to get one more. There it is. Got the stack completed. Perfect. Now, our trait, the most important part about playing Thrall is called Frostwolf Resilience. You can see it here, the little indicator right next to his portrait. But Frostwolf Resilience is going to give us a pretty decent chunk of healing every time that you get five stacks. So, after completing the five stacks and the circle uh, going around once, he just keeps pulling him, he keeps swapping himself in. I'm not sure why he's so ready to die, but. Uh, it's happening. It is indeed happening. Okay, where was I? Uh, oh, right, but uh, Thrall's Trait. So, um, all of your abilities are going to give you stacks of Frostwolf Resilience, and the, um, the AoE abilities that you have are going to give you even more. So, think of it this way. Your, uh, your Wind Fury is going to give you three stacks, 
for every auto attack that you hit while your wind fury is active, your um, echo of the elements is going to give you one stack for every bounce it does. So I believe that's four. Hmm. It says it bounces to three enemies, but I don't think it's counting the first one that we attack. So I'm pretty sure that's four. Yeah, because you get one stack for the person that you click on, and then the three bounces give you three more stacks. Right? That's how that works. Pretty sure that's how that works. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four in total. Ooh, we got out of the laser spaghetti. All right. So the uh. The wolf is probably going to be able to give you the most stacks and also the least stacks because it is the only skill shot that's really missable in terms of uh, your trait. So uh, if you throw it into a minion wave and you hit all seven minions, it's, it's big, it's big stuff. Uh, but if you throw it and you miss everything completely, then you're just kind of fucked. Like that. You can see it's really good uh, when you miss. And then... Kel'Thuzad is down to the Falstad flank. I don't want to be anywhere near the Artanis to get swapped into the fort. It's okay if he dies. There we go, team. Way to go. That's how you do it. But nobody stayed and channeled the objective, so now we have 0.4 seconds and a whole bunch of teammates trying to run in and do nothing. I don't have any mana, bro. I'm not going to stay here while you ruin your only chance of survival. Goodbye. You keep going in. Even maybe getting Lehman killed. No? Nope. Wow, okay. He felt like it was more important to trade his life there than uh, just go back and wait until the uh, objective is ready and a full team is ready to fight on the objective. So, whatever. It's fine. It's not, uh, it's not that big. It is actually a huge deal. The whole reason that I went back is because I wanted mana so we could continue fighting because we're good at fighting and l unless we die and we give the enemy team the XP they need to come back. So not super happy about poor decisions being made by our, uh, our Imperius. Yeah, not cool. Even better, KTZ, another death. Super squishy mage character hanging out really close to the enemy team that can kill him. And I'm getting 10 in the top lane, so it should be fairly simple to see. You don't need to be doing anything there. I miss my ult completely because everybody's swapping and dashing and getting all the fuck out of the way. I hate it, but at least we're going to get a gray main kill. Pat our numbers a little bit here. 2.3 seconds left on the timer and only 240 health left on our Imperius. Can you believe it? Enemy team just got their... Uh, ultimates, so we're, we're doing we're doing it. We're making things happen. Okay, well it's fine now. We must leave. Time to away. Goodbye, team. Falstad's flying forward. Not even a wolf ready to launch onto him in that clearly landing circle of his. Uh, now our ult, we're actually going to be picking up Sunder this game. Uh, Sundering is. A 70 second cooldown, it has a 0.5 second channel. You just saw me whiff it on Artanis and D.Va a little bit earlier, but the reason I'm taking this is because I don't want to rely on my team to do any sort of damage. Uh, when I want to kill a person, I want to kill them myself. And that is 100% the reason that we're going to pick Sundering instead, because Sundering is going to help us stun people, uh, it's going to help us clear a path, really, to one person that we want to kill. Uh, once they are stunned, they're easy to root, they're easy to drop all the rest of our damage on, and we should be able to just blow them up. Now, not only that, but it's good at, uh, you know, interrupting engages, disrupting the enemy team when they go to make certain plays. So, it's not like it's a super selfish ult, but it's still going to be better at helping Thrall kill things than Earthquake is. Earthquake, while it is a very, very, very good ultimate, um, it's basically, it's gonna be up to your team to make something happen inside of it, because even though you can still do a lot of damage to whatever character you are, uh, you're engaging on, it is, it's not as helpful. Uh, the stun is, is much more so. Just like that, we can knock Greymane back a little bit, get some healing charges up with the rest of our shit. You really want to fight? Let's fight. 
I've got a hammer, you've got your claws and your gun, and you're taking so much minion aggro, I didn't think so. Not enough mana to continue on. One of the bigger problems with Thrall um, is his his management. <laughs> Get it? Mana management? Oh my god. Uh, Thrall can run out of mana really fast if you're spamming your chain lightning as much as I am. Because as you can see, we have two charges right now, and that makes it really easy to press that button. Not to mention Thrall's lack of wave clear really makes you want to press that button more so you can kill more minions, so you can do things that an offlaner does. I think Thrall specifically is a, a weaker offlaner, but if you are playing him in the sense that you are going to be going to team fights, you're going to be going to, you know, start hitting people um, towards the mid to late game, then it's, it's probably okay. As long as your four man is making up for your uh, lack of, of of winning the solo, um, you're going to be all right. Or you could just play Thrall in the four man. I think he's perfectly capable of playing in the four man with any of his builds, to be perfectly honest with you, and still achieving maximum team fight effectiveness later on. So, cool, another KTZ death. I can tell this is going to be a fun game. Four deaths on both our Imperius and our Kel'Thuzad, but six deaths on our enemy Greymane and four deaths on most of the other people. Let's make it five for our Tannis. Ooh, good stuff. It seems weird, it seems like a weird game. Um, also, Yours truly has eight kills, so. <laughs> uh, this is why we called this uh, a Thrall carry build. Now, I do need to talk about the build a bit while looks like Imperius is just ready to run it in and die on Greymane for the third time. Not even going to get off his ult before he dies. Here I am. He's getting some health back again with our Ancestral Wrath. Gonna wait out that bomb and then walk right back towards my team because the enemy team seems pretty scared about running at me. I don't know why. I'm just a poor little thrall and I've gotten beamed. We're gonna win Fury out of that bitch and head right back to the fountain so I can get some more mana because I don't have any. Now, our level one talent, this one, the blue one. Uh, the elements here are gonna give you a second charge of chain lightning. And then the, uh, the halfway mark is going to give you a reduced cost of Chain Lightning. The only trouble is that you have to kill minions. You have to basically last hit minions with your Chain Lightning. Which is uh, the most League and Dota mechanic in the entire game. Uh, and it is it's tough for some people, but honestly, the more that I play Thrall, the easier it is for me to just kill minions. Um, being that the offlane is pretty easy for that in general. Ooh, he dodged everything. What a saucy motherfucker. I didn't wait for the Imperius Q, and he didn't wait for my root, and we did him at the same time and fucked everything up. So, um, but elements there at, uh, at level one is, it's the, the most, how do I even explain it? Ooh, good shot. Almost died still. Still very close to death. Looks like you're going to make it. That's okay. I may die now? No. We're just going to run forward. We're going to get some Wind Fury stacks. We're going to get a whole bunch of healing back on our trait and tell the enemy team that they can eat my butthole. Uh, God. I keep making points about the level 1 talent, and then I keep forgetting. I fucking love Thunderstorm. We still don't have any mana. We've used a shitload. Junkrat's going to die. But it looks like Falstad's going to die too as he misses his gust and really just doesn't seem very confident when faced with the Doom Hammer, if you know what I mean. So, our, uh, our level 1 talent, though, the, the main reason that we want it is for the extra charges and the mana reduction. Uh, both of those things are going to let you use it more often, and because of the number of targets that you hit with Echo of the Elements, it's going to activate your trait more often than your other two abilities. Since you have two charges, since both of those charges can bounce four times, that is easily one rotation of your trait, and then your your other two abilities can fill out the rest of that rotation of your trait, so you can get at least two um, trait heals by that time. So that's a lot of health back that you're getting at this level. We're looking at 588 healing 
um, at level 18. So you can imagine getting a full 1,100 health back uh, just because you used your chain lightning a couple times. It's really, really good. Uh, so even though chain lightning is a damage ability, you can also think of it as a, uh, a, a way to save your life if you're ever in a pickle and you need to get some healing quick. Oh, look, KTZ's getting some kills. Way to go, buddy. Making it happen. Look at you go. Now, our uh, level 4 talent, I'm actually going to deviate a bit from what I normally pick here. Uh, usually, you're going to pick Mana Tide to help with those mana problems. Can't believe she dashed away. Uh, or, you are going to pick the I'm Dead. I got swapped. I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on. I was looking at D.Va, and I got swapped by the Artanis, who just came in out of nowhere. Kudos to that guy, I got fucked and should have just walked straight through the bomb, but I'm a little bit, oh good, you're just gonna, you're just gonna sit there and, and die, huh? Just gonna let him kill you? <laughs> That's cool. Me too, me too. It's like, Imperius wants to join the club as well. Maybe he trades a kill first though, way to go, fantastic stuff. Are you gonna make it out? Are you gonna, you have the ability to leave. You've had the ability to leave for a while. <laughs> okay, you're gonna do it finally, way to go. Good job. Um, where was I? Oh right, um, normally though, a Mana Tide or Frost Wolf Pack both really help with, um, you know, mana, mana problems. Frost Wolf Pack obviously is not a quest, or is not a talent unless you hit the uh, required number of, of questy stacks. Um, and Mana Tide is just always going to give you flat mana restoration and reduce your cooldowns by a very slight amount every time that you get one rotation of your Frost Wolf Resilience. The reason that I took Feral Resilience instead is because the block charges are going to be really good in situations like this with this Grey Mane where he just thinks he can punch me after taking a camp that shreds armor and using all of his health. Um... But there's also the Artanis and the Falstad both doing mainly auto attack damage. So as long as my charges aren't getting swallowed up by D.Va, we have a lot of opportunity to block a lot of physical auto attack damage from the enemy team. Especially if she's out of her mech. Um, now, the other cool thing about this, uh, this talent is that you get three stacks of Frost Wolf Resilience um, instead of just one now. So if you hit Heroes, you're going to get three stacks towards your trait, and that specifically is going to make the ability heal you like fucking crazy. Because if you are, at say, half health, and you just rip one of these bad boys into the enemy team hitting two people, uh, you've gotten a complete rotation. I don't know why Imperius didn't just channel the fucking objective while the little dudes we're caught up, and now we're just gonna watch him die, because he made a very stupid decision, and, uh, yeah. You deserve that bad ding. I apologize, but you just completely ignored what should have happened for some kills, which is pretty fucking disgusting. Not gonna be able to kill Falstad with the Sundering there, pretty unfortunate. Our level 7 talent really never changes, it's called Ancestral Wrath. Ancestral Wrath is going to do percentage damage on a point and click opportunity. You need to move, lady, you can't hold that channel for that whole time. It's so unfortunate. And now nobody is... Okay, the... Just, oof. Everything about what just happened just makes me really upset. He blocked me from getting in there to help him. He blocked himself from getting away from damage. He didn't keep channeling, even though I was definitely going to root and kill Falstad if he had, but whatever, you know, just whatever. Uh, but our level 7 talent, Ancestral Wrath, is going to charge up every time that we make a rotation of our trait. Uh, we need 8 charges before Ancestral Wrath is usable, and then once it is, we are going to rip it and we are going to be able to take 15% of a character's maximum health, and then we're going to heal Thrall for 150% of the damage dealt. This is part of the reason it's so easy to stay alive with Thrall, because as long as this is charged up when you're going in, he didn't even continue walking forward. I hate everything about what's going on right now. It's just really fucking frustrating. 
I'm aiming, I'm leading the Asmo, and he's like, nah, man, I'm gonna die over here, so you look less cool. <sighs> okay, well, I think we're just going to lose the objective now, because the enemy team did all the correct things, and we did all the wrong things. So that's cool. It's gonna blink back towards the Falstad, try to get him out of the picture, and then lose the objective. Got a gray main for our troubles as well, so at least the enemy team can't really push with the objective, but we could have ended the game a hundred times by now, and we just didn't. So, neat! Um, Ancestral Wrath, though, you are going to get a lot of healing back, especially if you're using this on big characters like Asmo, Diva, or Artanis even. Uh, those characters are going to just give you so much health back with this ability and you're gonna deal so much damage with it to them that it is impossible not to take this when you need to put games on your back, truly. So your uh, level 13 talent's called Frostwolf's Grace. This actually helps with your Ancestral Wrath too because Frostwolf's Grace is gonna give you a full stack of your trait and we're gonna heal for 150% of the normal amount. So, um, 529 health is, that number change? I feel like that number changed. I don't know, I don't know. I feel like it may have changed. Um, anyway, I mean, it had gone up, or gone down. I feel like it was higher earlier, but I could be wrong. I thought Artanis was going to keep walking forward there to save his teammate like a dumb person and didn't like a smart person and Falstad is going to get the stupid wind tunnel and I can't get through it and I hate it but Greymane's gonna run around the backside to kill himself and Li Ming and it just doesn't matter because everything about this game is so fucking weird it's fine everything is working out even though it's all terrible <laughs> I should have blinked outside of the wind tunnel um, unfortunately, Brain did not pick up on that while we were in the middle of playing the game, so it didn't occur that way, and I looked really stupid. Uh, but our 13 talent, like I was mentioning, when you hit that D button, it gives you a full rotation of your trait, which gives you one full stack of your Ancestral Wrath. So if you need one immediately, if you're locked in at seven stacks, you just hit the D button, suddenly you've got eight, and then you can rip this point-and-click ability for 15% of someone's max health and a whole bunch of healing. It's really, really, really strong. Uh, and the, the way that those two talents work together is really good. Now, there is um, Spirit Shield as well at this at this uh, tier. Um, Spirit Shield on Thrall is actually very, very good at letting him block abilities. And the way that Thrall can cool down this ability um, pretty often makes him extremely tanky. Don't think you knew what was going on there, Diva. So good night. Uh, but having that spell shield up, it is on, what is that, normally a mm, 45 second cooldown. And then every time that your uh, your Frost Wolf Resilience makes a full rotation, you get 10 seconds off of it. So, as you can tell, it's really easy to do that, which makes Thrall tanky as fuck. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize, but you have to get the minions to the core so that they'll block the damage from the core so that you can attack it. Now, what you're doing is pretty dumb considering that the core regenerates health, and these people are coming back within 10 seconds of you making that terrible decision, so that's good. Also, Junkrat and Li Ming didn't feel like showing up, so that that should have been an operation abort, uh, like, I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, yeah, but 16 is going to be our big damage tier with Thrall. It is, um, it's a really, really strong power spike for him, no matter what talent you pick. Because if you're building for Wind Fury, uh, you got a lot more damage out of Wind Fury now. If you're building for uh, uh, percentage damage, really cool, whatever was happening there, not sure why you're going to die to a tower right at the end of the game. Junkrat trying to, you know, get the objective done, so don't, mm, and then he walks it. This game was just so something, just something, I don't even know. This is one of those games where the matchmaker just took its pants off, cracked a beer, and then 
uh, I don't know, like shot up some really, really strong heroin and decided that this, this was a game. Like, ugh, whatever. Gonna try to save Imperius here with the Sundering because it is two versus three right now, so he's gonna need all the help that he can get. Thunderstorm is what we're actually picking up at 16 though, so Thunderstorm is a questing talent that's going to let your uh, Chain Lightning do more damage and slow people. The only um, stipulation is that the uh, the damage and the slow are going to go up, uh, assuming that you hit multiple different targets. So you can't target the same person twice for uh, the slow and the damage to stack. Which is, I mean, it's pretty pretty easy to do, especially in team fights. Um, and then if you are ever in the ever in the uh, mindset that you need to kill someone with a chain lightning, but you've already chain lightning them once, just go ahead and do it, because it's a repeatable quest, and you can do it for the entire time that you have the talent, which is nuts. And at level 20, we did pick up the, um, what's it called? Wind Rush, uh, which is going to allow Thrall to blink, and he is going to get Wind Fury empowered on his person after blinking. I'm blinking away from the core damage there because I don't want to die. I need to protect my MVP from whoever the fuck else might actually get it on my team. Definitely, probably no one. No one at all. Because I did so fucking much that we literally carried this game. Whether it's through stats or kills or just general know-how, it felt like I was playing with bots. I will be honest with you. Um... Yeah, but Wind Rush, uh, you you get the Wind Fury on your uh, on your auto attacks when you blink, gives you stacks for your Frost Wolf resilience with those auto attacks too. So gives you the opportunity to blink in or blink out if you need to leave. You'll have movement speed if you need to get in. You'll have movement speed and some damage to boot, and then you have your regular Wind Fury as well. So you can deal a shitload of damage to someone with some autos because Thrall's autos fucking hurt. Anyway, 17 and 1, 101,000 hero damage, and 22,000 XP soaked. I mean, ask me to do more. Please. This character is just so good at doing literally all of these things. So as long as you're paying attention to where you need to be to soak XP, where you need to be to deal damage, and then where you need to be to not die, uh you're going to be able to win games almost single-handedly because it is hot. I mean, you have to have your team turn their brains on eventually, right? But, um, yeah. Yeah. Thrall and Alarak are just two of the characters that I think the game is easiest to carry with. So if you need someone easy, someone fun to wrap your brain around, I think Thrall is definitely the way to go. Now, Echo of the Elements is going to be our one. We are Feral Resilience at four. 7 is Ancestral Wrath, Sundering at 10, Frost Wolves Grace at 13, 16 is going to be Thunderstorm, and Wind Rush at 20. That's going to be it for me today, though, guys. I will see you tomorrow. GG's. Peace out.